Please be seated. What is success? What does success look like in today's world? When we look at social media, with its array of lip fillers, Botox, beach bodies, and the messages churned out on TV and advertising, it seems to be all about having the correct image, looking a particular way, wearing the right clothes, owning an impressive house, in a fast car, making money, defined as living your best life. The passages in today's readings, however, convey a very different message. Isaiah prophetically describes the suffering of the Messiah, often understood by Christians to refer to Jesus. He emphasizes the sacrificial nature of his suffering and death on behalf of humanity. Verse 45 sums up Jesus' mission. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. In Hebrews, he is our great high priest. He advocates for us. In Mark, we see human ambition again, when James and John vie to sit at Jesus' right and left hand in glory in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' response is to redirect them to a greater calling, serving others selflessly. Jesus teaches that greatness in God's kingdom is not found in power or authority, but in serving others. Jesus deliberately sought out the poor, the marginalized, those on the fringes of society, those looked down on and excluded. He spoke truth to power. Jesus' harshest words in the gospel are not directed to sinners, outsiders, or Gentiles. His harshest words were for those in positions of power who use that power to oppress others and maintain their own position. He was always being criticized by the religious hardliners of his day for how loving and forgiving he was to the poor, the marginalized, and those considered to be unclean sinners. When you preach nonviolence in a world of violence, that is going to be really divisive. When you preach good news to the poor in a world that worships wealth, that is going to be really divisive. When you preach about sharing equal power with the most vulnerable in a world obsessed with keeping power for itself, that is going to be really divisive. When you preach about repenting from these things and turning to the way of humility, mercy, forgiveness, grace, generosity, and justice, in a world of arrogance, coercion, malice, cruelty, and judgment, that is going to be really divisive. In fact, it will be so divisive, it may result in the preacher losing their life for such a message. The cross was the response to Jesus' divisive message. Much like the noose was to Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who preached such a message to his fellow Christians in Nazi Germany. And the bullet was to Martin Luther King Jr., speaking such a message to his fellow Americans. When you tell those in power to stop misusing their power, they may very well use that power against you. Jesus wasn't killed by atheists. He was brought down by powerful people with vested interests and by law and order allied with religion. When we are confronted with the sins of racism, of misogyny, of homophobia, of politicians punching down on refugees and asylum seekers in order to improve their own career prospects, dehumanizing their fellow man, and presenting them as a problem to be solved, instead of brothers and sisters made in the image of God and in need of love and help, we need to consider Jesus and his teachings in Matthew. 
Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. When I observe the procession of humanity as we come to communion in this place, I'm moved by the spectacle of people from such a diversity of nations and backgrounds coming together to encounter Jesus. When I witness the spontaneous burst of applause when a brother or sister is granted leave to remain, it is a blessing to behold. Psalm 139 says, For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that well. We are all created in God's image. Each and every one of us. So come. Be heartened, be strengthened, and meet him at the holy table. Come and receive Jesus looking down on you with love. In the name of God, our pain bearer, our life giver, and our love maker. Amen.